Good day everyone! The deeper you go, the more you understand. I am Miss Vilanda. Gather with me are my group mates. We will tackle in chapter 8. Chapter 8 talks about critical literacy. Critical literacy is established in an environment where students feel safe and participate fully in all aspects of classroom life. To be effective, a respectful environment must be established, which celebrates difference and promotes divergent thinking. Emphasis must be placed on expressing opinions, considering or sharing alternative views, and asking questions. And here, we will know how to characterize critical literacy, the brief background of critical literacy theory, and apply the principles of critical literacy in designing lessons and classroom activities. Before that, Let's hear Miss Michonne as she discussed the concept of critical literacy and theory of it. Now, let us explore what is critical literacy. The concept of critical literacy is theoretically diverse and combined ideas from various critical theories such as critical linguistic, feminist theory, critical race theory, as well as reader response theory and cultural and media studies from Look et al. 2009. Crit Critical literacy is a central thinking skill that involves the questioning and examination of ideas and requires one to synthesize, analyze, interpret, evaluate, and respond to the text read or listened to from University of Melbourne 2018. Critical literacy uses text and print skills in ways that enable students to examine the politics of daily life within contemporary society with a view to understanding what it means to locate and actively seek out contradictions with modes of life, theories, and substantive intellectual possessions from Bishop 2014. Rather than promoting any particular reading of any particular group or text, critical literacy seeks to examine the historical and contemporaneous privileging of and inclusion of groups of people with ideas from mainstream relatives. Since the 1990s, critical literacy theorists have outlined emancipatory theories of learning that address the complex relations of language and power through social critic, advocacy, and cultural transmission based on Noblanche and Brannan 1993. Oh, meaning critical literacy not only emphasizes the ability to read and write, but the ability to use reading and writing as a basis of higher order thinking skills that allow a person or student that allow a person or student to analyze and critically evaluate what is read and written. Then here the history of critical literacy theory to be discussed by Ms. Ayumale and Ms. Alagos. Much of the earliest scholarship on critical literacy is grounded in Frio Young Pedagog. So before anything else, Freire was a Brazilian educator and a philosopher who was a leading advocate of critical pedagogy that we will be discussing. In 1987, Freire and Macedo published their expansive volume on literacy and critical pedagogy. In it, they argued that those who are critically literate can understand not only how meaning is socially constructed within text, but also the political and economic context in which those texts are created and embedded. So by this, it involves bringing of questions exploring and also challenge as it describes how to be critically literate. Freire and Macedo 1987 While Freire and Macedo were perhaps the first to initiate a dialogue around the idea of critical literacy in their collection, it was not until 1993 that Langshear and McLaren issued what was to become the seminal text devoted to the topic. In it, they stated that literacy is more complex than traditionally defined skills of reading and writing. Rather, they argued that such a traditional definition of literacy is ideologically aligned with particular postures of normative social political consciousness that are inherently exploitative. So Langshear and McLaren argued two decades ago 
that in order to continue conducting critical literacy research, scholars need to conduct research that has historical function, approaches the process of becoming literate as more than simply becoming rational. So by contrast to this, critical literacy emphasizes the social construction of reading, writing, and text production within political context of in equitable or unfair economic, cultural, political, and institutional structure. Langshir and Mark Laren argued for a critically reflective teaching and research focused on both the form that literate skills take as social practices and the uses to which those skills are employed. And the authors identified three forms of educational practice that critical literacy can take on, varying by their commitment to inquiry and action. The first one is liberal education, the second is pluralism, and the third one is transformative praxis. First one is liberal education. What is liberal education? Here means an approach to disciplinary knowledge where intellectual freedom exists and where desperate interpretations are considered but inevitably contradiction is avoided and rational argumentation wins out. Example of a liberal education, a well-rounded educational program where you are educated in a multiple fields of study and not trained in a specific profession. Pluralism in pluralism, there is an emphasis on reading to evaluate principles that support a loose conception of tolerance. Tolerance here is aligned with a notion of diversity that is grounded on benevolence toward those who are not mainstream and in the process maintains the mainstream. So against these approaches, the authors forwarded transformative process that is which take the radical potential of critical literacy into correct direct emancipatory action in the world. Transformative process is a product of multidimensional critical consciousness which is informed by the notion of education as a practice of freedom and process, which Freire, or Freire explained as reflection and action upon the world in order to transform it. 1970 page 36. In addition to this, praxis is here defined through the Freerian 1970 as it mentioned before. The process of naming the condition of oppression and struggling collectively with others in a cycle of action, reflection, action against such oppression. Langshir and McLaren argued that the guiding principle behind the processes of transformative critical literacy process involves an analysis attempting to understand how agents working within established structures of power participate in the social construction of the literacies, revealing their political implications. So this is the theory action reflection of transformative process. Lastly, Freire argues that oppressed people can regain their humanity in the struggle for liberalization, but only if the struggle is led by oppressed people. In the early 1990s, McLaren and Langshir were some of the more radical scholars writing on the topic of critical literacy. Around the same time, Apple published an essay on the text and cultural politics which examined the social legitimation of certain knowledge in schools, making the argument that no curriculum is neutral and that the selection and organization of curricular information is necessarily an ideological process. Critical literacy process, which Langser and McLaren also called political and social literacies, involves textual studies that are analyzed at the discursive level in which the texts were created and in which they are sustained. While the authors understood that this move might lead to such literacies being seen as potentially subversive, they forwarded the key distinction centering in the difference between political indoctrination and the development of a critical consciousness or what fear called conscientization. They argued that even when students are introduced to texts that might be considered reactionary, a critical literacy approach involves working with them 
to understand the nature and implications of the ideologies in parade and in doing so engage students in reflection upon their own ideological investment. This purpose and direction of critical literacy is important because it eliminates the difference between the moralistic position taking of indoctrination and an ethical approach to reading through a critical consciousness that neither moralizes nor normalizes. Across the collection, Knobloch and Brannan echoed Street's concern that the tyranny of academic literacies can serve to socially reproduce dominant ideologies. Racism, sexism, classism, homophobia, xenophobia that perpetuate forms of injustice. Writing that same year, scholars ranging from Hall to Comber were beginning to study the implications of critical literacy learning in schools. Comber later argued that one of the best ways to approach critical literacy is to begin with multiple sources and opposing views to interrogate their construction by specific individuals with particular always political goals. At the turn of millennium just before the 2001 reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act or ESEA and the controversial No Child Left Behind Act or NCLB, Jung posed four possible orientations for future approaches to critical literacy education based on different perspective on the relationship between language and power. To understand how language maintains social and political forms of domination, to provide access to dominant forms of language without compromising the integrity of non-dominant forms, to promote a diversity which requires attention to the way that uses of language create social identities, and to bring a design perspective that emphasizes the need to use and select from a wide range of available cultural science systems. Although frequently taken in isolation, drunks argue that it is through the entire dependence of these approaches that learners can most fully engage theories and pedagogy of critical literacy. Eliminating the struggle in their collection and critical teaching and literacy, Knobloch and Brannan outlined four approaches to critical teaching and the idea of literacy learning which spanned functional literacy and the rhetoric of objectivism, interpretive literacy in the politics of nostalgia, expressivism as a literacy for personal growth, and critical literacy. Of these four central approaches, the authors argue that only critical literacy offered the complexity of social-political framework which foregrounded the study of the relationships of language and power with practical knowledge of how to use the language for the advocacy, social critique, and cultural transformation. This made the critical literacy distinct amongst a variety of approaches to literacy learning that claimed to address the social-cultural while remaining intentionally distinct from the political. Critical literacy theory proposed learning about politically relevant issues through language art skills as a way to make language arts more meaningful. Teaching must be done in ways that give students the authority to make decisions and participate in discussions that are not teacher dominated. While Mr. Gavilanes will discuss critical literacy and the art and how to enhance it. At this juncture, I would like to present to you the critical literacy and the arts. The creation of artistic products by an individual and the perception and rejection upon others' artworks showcase the power of critical literacies at work within arts context. There are primary aim of critical literacy. Number one, it allows students to see how text works to construct their worlds, their cultures, and their identities in powerful, often overtly ideological ways and in the second understand how to use text as social tools in ways that allow for a work reconstruction of the same world the arts literacies and 
reality are dynamically linked and the understanding attained by critically reading aesthetic text involves perceiving the relationships between the art, its creator and its context, both the practice and understanding of art forms, and being critically literate are interconnected. Indeed, critical literacy makes possible a more adequate reading of the world on the basis of which people can enter into rewriting the world into a formation in which their interest identities and legitimate aspirations are more fully presented present and more equally. There are several versions of the model offered by Freebody 1992 and Look and Freebody 1997. First, the coding practices. Developing resources as a code beacon. How do I crack this text? How does it work? What are its patterns and conventions? How do the sounds and marks relate singly and in combinations? Then, the text meaning practices. Developing resources as a text participant. How do ideas represented in the text string together? What are the cultural meanings and possible readings that can be constructed from this text? Next is the pragmatic practices. Developing resources as text user. How do the uses of this text shapes its compositions? What do I do with this text here and now? What will others do with it? What are my options and alternatives? Followed by the critical practices. Developing resources as text analyst and critic. What kind of person with what interest and values could both write and read this naively and without any problem with it? What is the text trying to do to me? And whose interest? Which positions, voices, and interest are at play, which are uh, here silent and absent. The next is and finally a textual analysis. When you say textual analysis, it is can be guided by asking the learners to make their way systematically through a list of questions, such as the following. First is what is the subject or topic of this text? Why might the author have written it? Who is written for? How do you know? What values that the author assume the reader holds? How do you know? What knowledge does the reader need to bring to the text in order to understand it? Who would feel left out in this text and why? Who would feel that the claims never done in the text clash with their own values? beliefs or experiences. How is the reader positioned and relation to the author as a friend, as an opponent, as opponent, as someone who needs to be persuaded, as visible, as someone who agrees with the author's views? Those are the questions questions of textual analysis and that would be all about the report that I presented to you. Students today experience a constant stream of ideas and information online, in print, and through electronic games and mass media. As they move into the junior grades, they encounter an ever-widening range of texts. They need skills to determine where to to direct their attention in how to interpret messages and use them appropriately. And here's another approach for analyzing text and text clustering to be discussed by truly yours, Miss Violanda. Another approach for analyzing text is to use a checklist such as CARS or CARS that means credibility, accuracy, reasonableness, and support, which was originally developed for use in evaluating websites. First, Credibility. Credibility is about when someone is capable of being believed, worthy of confidence and reliable, one that has evidence of authenticity and reliability that is very important. Example, when you are a student or the reader, to test it, it could help you judge the credibility of a text if you examine the author's credentials and the quality of content. You have to look for biographical details on their education, 
training and or experience in an area relevant to the information using the following questions. Do they provide contact information, email or postal address, phone number? What do you know about the author's reputation or previous publications to finally approve on information text it should pass through a review process where several readers examine and approve the content before it is published statements issued in the name of an organization have almost always been seen and approved by several people did you know when you are credible, you are worthy of other people's trust. Second one is accuracy. It is a quality or a state of being correct, having the standard or preciseness. Also, it is the information that needs to be up to date, factual, exact, and comprehensive. Students or readers should bear in mind that when judging accuracy, it includes timeliness, and comprehensiveness. We must therefore be careful to note when information was created before deciding whether it is still of value. It is always a good idea to consult more than one text. For additional information, indicators that a text is inaccurate either in whole or in part include the absence of date or an old date on information, it changes rapidly, sweeping generalizations and the failure to acknowledge opposing views. Third one is reasonableness. Reasonableness involves examining the information for fairness objectively and moderateliness. Fairness requires the writer to offer a balanced argument and to consider claims made by people with opposing views. Did you know? A good information text will have a con recent tone, arguing or presenting material thoughtfully, like comprehensiveness. Objectivity is difficult to achieve. Good writers, however, try to minimize bias. Therefore, as future educators and as students, we should be fair and what we write, share, and how we treat people. Last one is the support. Support for the writer's argument from other sources strengthen their credibility. It can take various forms such as writing, bibliography, and references. When you are searching for credibility, it is a good idea to triangulate information that is to find at least three texts that agree. If other texts do not agree, further research into the range of opinion or disagreement is needed. We students or readers should be careful when statistics are presented without identifying the source or when they cannot find any other text that present or acknowledge the same information. In recap, lastly, we will discuss text clustering. Text clustering involves confronting students with texts which obviously contradict each other. The task is to use whatever evidence they can find to try to make judgment about where the truth actually lies. Sometimes these judgments are relatively easy. News reports, fairy tales, and everybody's texts are good materials for text clustering. By the way, here's our activity. Note, it should be not less than 150 words. Then, properly label it with credibility, accuracy, reasonableness, and support. You have to search one story or text that has argument, then apply the cards in answering. Thank you for watching. We hope you have learned well in our discussion.